What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. This week's video is a short video, but I'm going to show you how to remove latency out of your projects. A couple weeks back, I was recording guitar and I had about half a second of latency and it's super annoying and definitely not a good way to record. So I'm going to show you two ways on how you can remove that inside of Logic Pro X. Let's get right to it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do before you start recording is you wanna to go to your preferences and you wanna to go to audio. And then you wanna to go to where it says buffer size and you wanna lower it down to the lowest possible sample size. And the lowest I would go to is 128 samples just because 64 and 32, you start getting a little bit of a issue with the audio quality. So 128 is the absolute lowest I would go. And then when you're mixing and you're not recording anymore, you can go ahead and bump it up to 512 and 1024. I usually am pretty good at 512. And the reason to why uh, we are going to change our buffer settings is so when we're recording, your computer can only buffer uh, the, 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 the section 128 samples of your recording. Instead of getting 512 samples, you're gonna be using way more CPU power. And what you have to keep in mind also is that if you're mixing and recording at the same time, uh, mostly done in home studios, you have a bunch of plugins on, so that's already taxing your CPU power. So what you wanna do is you wanna use the least amount of samples, and again, I recommend 128 to record. And you can see if that can go ahead and take away your latency. The second way to remove latency in Logic Pro is actually a new feature they added with the new update. And if you go to the same, so let me just start all over here. If you go again to Logic Pro, go to preferences and then go to audio, you go to where it says general. Now they actually have a low latency mode. And this is what I found out when I was having trouble a couple weeks back. When you press low latency mode, what it does is that it turns off all of the plugins that are really uh, heavy in processing, taking your CPU power, and it temporarily shuts them off until you can record your track on. And then you can go ahead and take off the low latency mode and then everything will come right back on. So this button right here, and, and you know, also here in the bottom when you when this bar turns on, you can go ahead and adjust uh, the latency limit here too. So instead of it being, uh, you know, five seconds is already pretty accurate. But if you need to bump it up or you need to lower it down, you definitely can. If you go to zero, that's literally no latency at all. But just keep in mind that when you do press this button and you do lower it down to zero, it will take a hit on your CPU as well. So be really careful with that and make sure that your computer uh, can handle all of that processing power. Also, another thing to keep in mind, the computer you use is an important part on you know recording and making sure that you don't have any latency. Uh, for instance, you know my, my computer is an Intel Core i7 and I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So that's plenty of power, processing power, in order for my computer to handle uh, not only plugins, libraries, and also record on top of it. Uh, you can also uh, keep in mind that when you have an Intel Core i7, um, the computer actually processes uh, with what we call multi-threading. So if I open up the CPU meter here, uh, technically this is a quad core computer, but I have eight cores working at the same time. So the perks of having Intel Core i7 is that you can use hyper-threading. Eight actual physical cores inside of the computer and then eight virtual cores with the i7 processing chip, which also allows me to uh, handle all of the sample libraries and plugins that I use. And it doesn't take that much of a hit on my CPU. If you're using Intel Core i5, then you're stuck with only four threads uh, because you know they, those only have four uh, cores and then they don't have the capability of multi-threading. So that's also something to keep in mind. So I guess that's three things that can help you with latency. So the first one is the buffer settings, the lower, the better. Then we have the 
low latency mode if you turn it on again it shuts off everything in your plugin section that will be taking up any cpu or processing power that way it's only focused on making sure that whatever you play plays back in real time and then also you can control uh, the milliseconds here and again the lower you go if you have zero milliseconds of delay then that means you know you're you're hearing straight off of you know when you play the guitar you're hearing it right back at you but keep in mind that the lower you go the more cpu heavy uh, this mode gets and then the third thing will also be uh, your computer so depending on your computer if you have intel core i7 or i5 uh, the perks of intel core i7 is again you have the multi-threading capability and you're able to have four cores inside your computer plus four virtual cores so that's a ton of processing power that you have available to you so if you found the information of this video helpful go ahead and hit the like button subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly videos if you want to see more videos like this on how to use logic pro x or if you have any questions throughout this video please drop your comments down below and i'll get to them as soon as possible don't forget to share with your musician friends i will see you all soon